on, hurry up in there, will you? You know, i got to be at work in an hour. What on earth could you be doing in there? My name is Kelly Whitlock. I'm a professional animal trainer, but today I'm going to train you. I'm going to train you how to throw your kitty litter scoop out forever, okay? We're going to toilet train your cat. Now, the video is actually in two parts. I'm also going to show you at the end of the toilet training portion how to train your cat. If you want to train him to roll over or sit up or wave, I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. It's easy and you're going to have a wonderful connection with your cat and your cat will love the attention. You'll also really, really impress your friends. So, uh, what do you need to toilet train your cat? Well, you need an indoor cat, <laughs> you need a cat that uh, uh, doesn't have access to the outside. You also need a lot of patience. Any animal training requires a lot of patience. Also confidence. Believe that this will work. Hundreds and hundreds of cats have been toilet trained. And um, this cat, all I have to do for him is lay down food and water and flush twice a day. That's all I have to do. The training should take about uh, three to four weeks. And the first week's quite easy, the last week's quite easy, it's the middle weeks, week or weeks, that uh, get a little messy. So I want you to stick with it, hold on to that desire to never clean out a kitty litter box again, and let's get started. Hi, and welcome to step one. There are four steps, and the only rule is not to jump a step. You want to make sure you've completed one step, and the cat is comfortable at that level before moving on. Okay, so let's start. Step one, first thing you want to do is get your kitty litter box from wherever it is in the house and put it right beside the toilet. Now, just to let your cat know you've moved the box, just pick him up and drop him in the kitty litter. Just move the kitty litter around a little bit so he knows that his kitty litter is now located here. Usually that's enough to move them and they'll start to use the kitty litter box in the bathroom. Keep that for two days. On the end, at the end of the second day, what I want you to do is get an environmental kitty litter or flushable kitty litter and I want you to sprinkle that on top of the kitty litter you're using already. If I can make a suggestion, one kitty litter I really like is Cat's Pride. It's a flushable kitty litter, it's also clumping and really good odor protection because some flushable kitty litters aren't that good for odor protection. So get yourself some Cat Pride, Cat's Pride and sprinkle it on top. The next day, put even more on. And on the fourth day, what I want you to do is completely replace the kitty litter you're using now with Pride. Now the reason we don't do this all at once is we're going to be doing lots of changes on the cat, but we're going to be making them one at a time in very small amounts, so hopefully the cat won't notice that much. So lots of changes, but short ones, small ones, over a long period of time. So over this first four days, you're also going to be laying the training foundation down for the cat. And basically what that is, is we're going to make the cat think that this place here is a wonderful, magical place that gives him lots of treats and he's going to love to be here. So, uh, you have to find the treat the cat likes. I'm using little pieces of steak today. Uh, small pieces of chicken or tuna work as really well. Um, also, pounce treats are good because they can be cut up into small little bits. You want to cut them up into the smallest piece that you can give your cat because that means that's the more rewards you can give your cat. They don't really know that they're just small treats. They just think they're getting lots and lots of treats. Now, before you give your treat, you're going to say a word. And you're going to say the same word each time and in the exact same way. You might have heard of clicker training and I'll talk about that later in the video, but right now all you have to do is pick a word and I'll use the word G-O-O-D and I'm going to say that nice and strong and that's the word I'm going to use just before I give him a treat. So it's going to look something like this. Kitty? Good! And I'm going to give him a treat. Good! Okay? Now we're going to add one more thing to that. We want him to be on the toilet when he gets treated. So I'm going to uh, bait him over to the toilet and try to get him to jump up. Now some cats are completely comfortable up here. They drink out of the toilet and they're fine. But some aren't that uh, comfortable up there or have never been up there. So this is where a bit of the training comes in. And remember to say the word good very nice and strongly the exact same way just before you give the treat. I don't want to hear any good or good. None of that. It's good. Or pick whatever word you want to use. So let's see if we can get Kitty up onto the toilet. Like this. Come on. Let's see. 
No, I knew he was going to go up there. But if you had a... Good. If you had a cat who'd never been up there, I'd maybe reward him for just putting a couple paws on there. Uh, one paw, and then two paw, and then of course maybe give two or three rewards for jumping up completely. So keep rewarding him. Good. And then a treat. And just leave him up there. Some cats uh, don't even like to take treats, so you might have to do something different. You might have to just pet him when he's up there. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? And lots of praise and attention. Very few cats don't like to be petted and stroked and, and touched a lot. There you go, stand there. Good. And treats, lots of treats. Oh, nice and comfortable, wonderful place to be. Okay? Now you can see I'm feeding Kitty from my hand. Uh, he will take treats directly out of my fingers. Not all cats will do this. So um, you can train your cat to do this. It's very easy. Just put something absolutely wonderful in your hand and just don't let it go until they take it out of your fingers. If not, you can also put something just on the flat of your hand and they'll eat it up from there. If you absolutely have to, you can put something on the toilet seat to have them take it out of your hand. But it's better to train them, uh, sorry, take it off the seat, but it's better to train them to take it out of your hand. Good. Good. Oh, here you go. Give me another one. Stay up there. Okay, these sessions, um, typically you want them short and many. So short and often. They shouldn't last any more than, good, four minutes. So you don't want to get the cat bored. Um, but you'd like to do at least four or five a day over these next four days. So as many as possible to get the cat really, really comfortable up here. Now one thing is going to start happening. Every time you walk into the bathroom, the cat's going to follow you and jump up on the toilet seat. That's good. We want him to think this is a wonderful, incredibly wonderful place to be. So the more you treat him and the more you praise him for jumping up in the toilet, the more success you're going to have later on. Cats can be trained if they're six months old to about oof, 12, 13 years old. The only problem is when they get older, they might have trouble jumping up on the toilet seat. But then you can just give them something, like a bucket, so that they can step up to onto it before they get on the toilet seat. That'll help them balance a little better. The reason you don't want start to start until six months is because until they're six, seven months old, they don't really have the balance to be up on the toilet seat, they might fall in. So you kind of have to wait till six months, but even if you have an older cat, it doesn't matter. You might have to leave this bucket by the toilet seat. Big deal. You've got a toilet train cat. Now before you start step two, I want to make sure that step one has been completed. You want to make sure that the cat is comfortable using the kitty litter box in the bathroom and also that uh, you've had the cat or cats jump up on the toilet seat and they're comfortable up there. If it takes you an extra few days, longer than, usually it takes cats four days, that's why I say four days, but if it takes your cat a little bit longer or you haven't had time so you haven't been able to do the training, take those extra few days and just make sure he's 100% used to coming into the bathroom to use the kitty litter box and comfortable up on the toilet seat. So, step two. It's a big change. This is what we're going to do. You're going to buy a roasting pan. These are the oval aluminum roasting pans. You can get them um, at the supermarket, the dollar store. Uh, very cheap, but extremely useful. What you're going to do is put some inside the toilet. This is how it fits in most standard toilets. Some toilets I found have been a little smaller, so you just have to squish it in. No problem, it still works. Now, with the litter pan, this is our new litter pan, in the toilet, you're going to fill it up with cat's pride. Let's say about mm, two inches. Just make yourself a little litter box there. And there you go. This is what the cat's going to use from now on. Now, the cat probably has already been jumping up here just to see what you're doing because he's been getting so many wonderful treats on the toilet. So if he jumps up here, reward him, of course. And also, you know, just take his paw and, and bat around the kitty litter or bat it around yourself just to get him used to the thought that this is his new kitty litter. Of course, you want to as well take out his old kitty litter box. Get rid of it. But just before you do, what I want you to do is steal just a little bit of kitty litter of uh, used kitty litter from your old box and just put it inside just to give that little bit extra um, smell just to get to move them over just that little bit quicker. Another little tip, you might want to do this on a Friday afternoon when you know you're going to be home a little bit more on the weekend so you can watch and see what exactly happens. Now you might be worried about support. Is this going to hold my cat? Well, amazingly, it is very, very strong. 
You can try, you can push on it, or even, look at this. <laughs> it's very, very, very strong. Um, if you're worried, like if your cat is maybe over 20 pounds, uh, then I would go to maybe two roasting pans just to give it that little bit of extra strength. But you don't have to tape it down or anything. The rim itself holds the roasting pan in place. If you want to see what it looks like, here it is. This is my cat kitty. As soon as your cat's doing this, then it's just a matter of time before he is trained to use the toilet instead of a litter box. Now always remember, keep treating him though. As soon as he's on the toilet and you see him, you can say good and reward him right after. If you have two bathrooms in your house, great, you can maybe use this toilet for the next three weeks just for the cat. But if you did have to share it with the cat during this time, you would have to lift up the lid, take the litter box out, and close the lid, use it, and then put it back, of course. Another uh, suggestion for you is to just purchase one of these little things, because sometimes he might kick the litter out of the toilet. Usually it just stays in, but just in case he kicks it out, just have one of these around for quick little cleanups. One important thing to remember is during the training, cleanliness is really important. Cats usually don't like to use a litter box that's full. So again, you don't have to be here every time he uses the litter box, but at least once or twice a day you might have to clean it. So you might be cleaning a little bit more than you used to clean your litter box, but just for a short time. So cleanliness is very important. Also, treat your cat again. Every time he uses the, the toilet, treat him. If he's up here using it, treat him. And that's why saying, uh, associating the word good with a treat was very important in the beginning. Now when you see him on the toilet, you can say good, good in the same way, in the same tone of voice that you were using during the training sessions. Usually they won't jump off and run for the treat when they're using the toilet. They'll wait, but they know that what they're doing at that moment is what is earning them the treat. If your cat was comfortable jumping up in the toilet, usually this transition is an easy one. He will start to use this kitty litter box instead of the one on the floor. If not, you may have problems, and your problems will be one of two types. The first type is the better type, and that is holding it in. You'll probably have gotten used to your cat's habits right now, and you'll realize that maybe he's not going to the bathroom as often as he used to be. Um, what I would worry is if he doesn't go number two for three days, um, or pee for two days. Um, usually it's completely normal that they hold it in a little bit because things are changing, things are a little unusual. So even in the wild when things change and things are, get unusual, they hold it in because they don't want to be seen by predators or they think some predators are around. So um, what uh, holding it in a little bit is normal. If you want to move things along a little, if you know what I mean, um, if you give them a little canned pumpkin, that usually smooths things out and uh, makes things appear quite quickly. But um, holding it in is your first problem. Your second problem is a little worse accidents. I don't want you to get discouraged, but it's very rare you get through the entire training without at least one accident. Okay, so what I want you to do is just get cleaning products ready. Um, basically all you'll need is a soap. So blot up the stain with as much as you can with paper towels, then use a uh, very soapy water, pour that on, soak that up. Then just put fresh water on and soak that up. Now that'll get rid of the urine and the smell for us, but not for the cat. So you also need to spray it with vinegar, half vinegar and half water. Spray the entire area and let it dry. That will take the smell out so even the cat can't smell it. And you want that because if the cat smells that there's urine on a rug or a carpet, he's going to use that spot again. Never use ammonia products because those smell like urine to a cat. Okay, so get products ready and don't be discouraged. Also, there's nothing really you can do about it uh, punishment-wise. If it's after the fact, there's nothing you can do. Five seconds after an animal has done something, he forgets about it. If you do walk in and catch him doing something on the carpet, just pick him up and put him on the toilet. And if he continues on the toilet, praise him, praise him, and praise him. Lots of treats for you for doing it on the toilet. Just a little tip to prevent any accidents happening. Sometimes cats, when they get their litter box taken away, they choose the bathtub instead. So, what I want you to do is plug up your bathtub and just put about an inch of water in during the first three weeks. Another thing you can do to avoid accidents is to remove anything absorbent in your bathroom on the floor, like rugs. So get all the rugs out of the bathroom just for the training period. Sometimes also, cats will paw at the toilet seat, so go right ahead and tape the toilet seat up. 
so it doesn't fall down on him and create a bang and he gets kind of scared. This happened when I was training my cat. Uh, it didn't matter though. As long as I brought him back here with little pieces of chicken and tuna, he soon forgot it. Last thing is to remove anything on top of the toilet, just in case they paw at it and it falls down and makes a noise. We want to make this a lovely, wonderful environment. So what I want you to do over the seven days, that is step two, is remove kitty litter waste from the pan. You can either flush it or just toss it. And don't refill the kitty litter pan. So over the next seven days, the kitty litter is going to be going down and down and down by small amounts. And at the end of the seven days, you should only have about half an inch to an inch of kitty litter left in the pan. If during this time you have to completely take the pan out, uh, empty it, clean it, and put it back in. Sometimes that may happen. Again, cleanliness is important. Or if you're not, you know, you could just uh, buy a few pans and every few days throw one out and use another one. And during this time, remember to keep training him on the toilet. Obviously, you're going to reward him when he uses the litter in the toilet, but also keep up your training sessions, at least in the beginning stages. Now your cat has been using the roasting pan as a litter box for about a week. You've been taking kitty litter out and not replacing it, so there's really only about a half an inch to an inch of kitty litter in the pan now, and you're comfortable, your cat is comfortable with this. Now we're going to take it to the next step. We're going to do some cutting. We're going to start to trick him. We're going to start to make small holes in the pan. So the first hole is going to be about an inch long. I want you to get like a box cutter and just cut into it. Make like an X. Don't have to be precise. Doesn't have to be right in the center. Fold all the edges in so they're like this, so they can't catch on the cat's feet when he goes in. There, it's nice and safe. Small little hole. So we're going to put this in the toilet, close it down, and replace it with about the same amount of litter that was in the toilet before. There you go. What's the hole for? Well, we're going to start small. And when the cat now uses the litter box, he's going to hear some of the uh, kitty litter fall into the toilet, maybe some of his own urine might fall in the toilet, and he's going to hear that splashing. We want him to get used to this still feeling secure. So we're going to have a small hole to start with. Now keep this for about three days. Okay, so let's make it a little bigger now. Da -da -da. Again, just make an X and bend it over. With the first hole, we waited three days before we made it any larger, but now you can go a little quicker. Every two days, take the pan away and make the pan, make the hole just slightly larger, just uh, about an inch around, maybe a little less than an inch around, larger each time, and wait only two days. If you do get any accidents at this point, if the cat rebels a little bit, it's because you are moving too fast. Every two days is a good number and it works for lots of cats, but you know, maybe your cat just wants to go a little slower. So then either take it back a step, um, maybe offer just a little bit more litter, um, or get a pan and just make, make the hole a little bit smaller and let them get used to that for a couple days and then move on. Okay, here we have the larger hole and you can see the kitty litter is still around so the cat can sort of still feel that when he's going in the bathroom. Now you're going to see, hopefully, he's going to start to take out one or two of his paws, either put his two front paws or maybe one back paw um, on the seat instead of crouching completely inside the roasting pan. This is good. This is what you want. As soon as you see him use the litter box, treat him right after. Here's another little tip. Sometimes cats are really fond of kitty litter, and when you give them a hole, they'll scoop and scoop and scoop until all the kitty litter's down the hole, and then they get discouraged because there's none left. Well, trick them a little bit. Take some super glue and a new pan, spread the super glue just a little bit in the pan, and then some kitty litter on top. When that dries, put the kitty litter back in, um, about an inch or whatever you're using, back in, and then give it to the cat. When the cat scoops all the kitty litter away, there'll still be some left and he'll still feed it on his paws and that's usually enough to get him to go. Now the hole is quite large and you might be worried, oh my gosh, is my cat going to fall in? Well, don't worry, even though there's quite a large hole in the pan, it still can support a cat. I've never had it happen that a cat has fallen in, but I can imagine maybe the possibility of one leg 
falling in and touching the water and scaring the cats lately. Well, that's the beauty of you training him on the toilet. He still thinks of this place as a wonderful, magical world that gives him lots of tuna and treats whenever he jumps up on it. Um, getting one leg doused versus lots of tuna and chicken, there's just no comparison. He will come back to the toilet. Okay, once you don't think you can cut any more into the pan, well then that's the time to take it out. Okay? My suggestion is you do this on a Friday when you know you're going to be home Saturday and Sunday. And every time the cat goes in or approaches the toilet, don't rush to the bathroom because that usually puts them off and they run the other way. Some cats are very private at this moment. But just stay by. You know, if you have a television or a den near the bathroom that you know that if you sit there and watch TV, you could just watch and wait. If, you, if you're starting to get to know your cat's habits now, as you will, what time he uses the toilet, you can watch out and sit and wait. And when he goes in, just listen for that lovely little tinkling sound. And then when he comes out, and you can say good kitty during the tinkling sound, and as soon as he leaves the bathroom, whoa, lots of treats, lots of treats, lots of treats. Here again is Kitty using the toilet, and you can see the stance he'll take for urinating, and I'll show you the other stance in a second. Now, what I've shown so far is how to toilet train a cat if you have one cat. Well, two or three or four cats, it's basically the same. You might want to take a little longer to do the training, though. Your training might not last three or four weeks, it might last five or six weeks. Just go slow, because you're going to have to go to the speed of your slowest cat. One thing I would suggest, though, is in the beginning stages when you're treating the cat for going up on the toilet, I would do this individually. So lock your other cats out and train one cat, train each cat alone. Now in a second you're going to see what happens after the cat uses the toilet. They'll scrape the toilet seat just like they were covering up their urine, just like they would have done with the kitty litter. This is natural and it's instinctual for them to cover up their urine or their feces so it doesn't smell and attract predators. Now here's the other stance I was talking about. You can see he's sitting a little higher up in the toilet seat. And again afterward he's going to paw at the toilet seat. But the wonderful thing about this is that because the cat goes in water there is virtually no smell. Okay, maintenance. Making sure this sticks. Well, uh, number one, I still treat my cat for using the toilet. I still do. It only costs me a half a pounce treat or a piece of chicken that I uh, happen to be eating, whatever, and it makes the cat happy and it still associates a good, wonderful feeling with him using the toilet. You know, even two, three years down the road, you can still treat your cat for using the toilet. When you catch him, obviously he's going to be using it sometimes when you don't see it. Um, also, a little maintenance tip is, or a little other little tip is, this transfers. Oh my gosh, you move. Don't worry. If you move, just uh, in your new house, again, go back to, well, I call it going back to kindergarten. So go back to kindergarten, bring your cat into the new bathroom, and treat him for coming and touching the toilet, treating him for jumping up on the toilet, making it a wonderful place. Oh, what a good kitty, what a good kitty. And if the first time you see him use the toilet, obviously, treat him, treat him, treat him. Just in case there's any male humans living in the house with you, they have to remember to keep the seat down. Kitty can't go to the toilet with the seat up. So what I did was, I wrote a little reminder. Seat down, please. Now, teaching your cat to flush. Well, um, it is possible, and at the end of the video, again, I'm going to show you how to teach your cat to do lots of tricks. But flushing is something I wouldn't bother with, because if you teach him to flush, he flushes all the time. He just flushes whenever he gets the feeling to flush. He doesn't flush after. It's hard to you know, connect those two uh, things together, using the toilet and then flushing for the cat. So don't worry about flushing. It's a very small price to pay, a little flush two, three times a day, and you never have to clean the kitty litter box again. So that's how to toilet train your cat. It's a big change for the cat, but we're going so slowly and making such small little changes that hopefully the cat won't notice and he'll just get used to each new stage as it comes along. So be confident that this works. Hundreds and hundreds of cats have been toilet trained and I know it gets a little messy around step two and you might have an accident. Um, I did as well. Just uh, get ready to clean it up and uh, just keep on going because it does work. Stick with it. And remember, you never have to clean a kitty litter box again.
<laughs> okay, let, now let's learn how to train animals. I've been really lucky in my life being a professional animal trainer. I've got to work with cats and dogs, of course, but also other wonderful animals. I've trained pigs. Um, I've trained horses, which are really smart and they love to learn. I was lucky enough to raise a zebra once, and they're even smarter than horses. Well, they are a horse, but uh, very, very smart animals. I even trained a llama to jump over a camel once. That was fun. And I also trained dolphins, which, as you can imagine, are just wonderful to train. Very smart animals, but you know what? I've trained a lot of cats who loved the training just as much as a dolphin did, and were just as intelligent and quick to pick things up as a dolphin. So keep that in mind, and let's start part two. You may have heard of clicker training already, and uh, don't be shocked, but if you were following the toilet training instructions to the letter, you've already started clicker training. Um, you didn't use a clicker, but you used the word good, because what clicker training is, is pairing a sound with a food reward. So giving a sound at the same time as you're giving the food rewards so the cat begins to understand that the sound means that he's earned a treat. Now, uh, you were using the word good, but if you wanted to, you could uh, grab a clicker from, they sell them in lots of different pet stores, and it's anything that just makes a metallic sound or a quick sound like this. And the beauty of this is it has to be short and sweet. That's why I asked you to say good, really small and strong, like a short and strong, so you didn't drag it out. Because the longer you make that sound, the more of the things the cat will do during that time. And you want to make it really short and sweet so you, so you catch that exact behavior. Now, so um, you can get a clicker if you like, but uh, what you really do need for this next step is a target stick. Uh, it can just be a piece of wood, a ruler, something like this, because the cat is just going to touch one end. It's going to be a target for the cat to help in the training. Okay, here are the basics. What you want to do is get your reward in one hand. Again, small little pounce treats. I'm just using the cat's normal kibble right now. They'll work for kibble. They, they love the training so much. Uh, your target stick and your clicker in one hand or your mouth to say the word good. I'm going to use the clicker so I can talk at the same time I'm doing the training. And you're going to take the target and you're going to allow the cat to touch the target with his nose. Oops. And when he does, you'll give him a treat. Okay, seems pretty simple. We'll just keep doing that. So he has to touch the target with his nose. Good. And you'll see he starts to... After the first couple sessions, he'll start to reach for it. <laughs> I'm bad at giving treats here. He'll start to reach for it, and that's what you want. You want him to know that it's him touching the target and hearing the click. That's what's giving him the reward. Now sometimes cats will, instead of just touching it, they'll reach over and bite the target by accident. Okay? We don't want that at all. So if they bite, um, don't reward them for that. Oh, see, so watch that. But I did click. Don't worry, it was a mistake, but I'm just not going to reward, and I'm going to offer it to him again, kitty. And make sure he just touches and reward for that. Okay? After a few days, you're going to be able to start playing around with the cat a little. Uh, it depends, the timing depends just on how quickly you're moving along with the training. Maybe you're um, only doing one session a day, so it might take you a little longer. But if you're doing a lot of sessions a day, it shouldn't be long before you're able to do this. And just bring the cat around. And he will follow the target to touch it. Now you know he really understands the training. Especially because, whoops, he knows the food is in my hand, and he's going away from the food. Kitty, come back here. He's going away from the food to touch the target. So he knows that he has to touch the target to get the food. Kitty, come over here. To shape or to capture, that is the trainer's question. Once your cat understands the clicker, and by that I mean um, he's following the target around, and you see that when you click, he stops whatever he's doing and he rushes over to get the treat from you. That's when he completely understands the clicker. Now you can start training behaviors, and you can do it in one or two ways. You can um, capture a behavior, which is the easiest way. And that is just catching something your cat already naturally does, like, kitty, kitty, pay attention, and scratch face, scratch face, scratch face. Now you see, I, the cat normally scratches his face, of course, and when I was in a training session, I found him doing that, so I clicked and rewarded, and clicked and rewarded. When he scratched his face, all of a sudden he started scratching his face more often. Kitty, scratch face, 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 sc
Scratch face. Scratch face. And I'll show you how to put it on cue uh, after this. So that's the easy way. You can just find a behavior the cat's doing naturally already, like jumping up on a chair, and click and reward for that. To shape a behavior, that's the more common way to train animals. And what we want to do is you want a final behavior, but you can't just get there by going, hey, shake a paw, shake a paw. He doesn't understand English. You have to get there in small increments. So you're going to shape the behavior over different over time. So uh, shake a paw. Well, what I want is to him to put my, his paw in my hand. So I'm not going to start up top. I'm going to start really down low. I'm just going to sneak my paw, my hand in there and get him to put his paw on my hand. Try again. So again, timing is important. I'm clicking when his paw is solidly placed in my hand. So sneak it under again. And not when it's being lifted up or when he's about to put it on. It's when it's right in my hand. And then over a few days, you can move it so your hand is raised up a little bit. Oops, see I made a mistake? No problem. There you go. And then up a little bit until he has to raise his paw to go to touch my hand. And that's how you teach shake a paw. Here's another fun thing you can teach. Have the cat jump through a hoop. For this, you can go back to using the target and have the cat come through the hoop. Good cat. When the hoop is low on the ground and just lead him through the hoop with the target. Then you can gradually have the hoop higher and higher and higher until he's actually making a jump through the hoop and then phase out the target and probably the cue for this is just put the target put the hoop in front of him and he should jump through good kitty how about a rollover uh, it's actually quite easy for this it's even easier if your cat will allow him uh, allow you to touch him and just roll him over so you're going to have the clicker in hand and roll him over and click at the exact moment he's rolling over, and of course reward after. Let's do it again. <laughs> Oops, did I drop it? Okay, roll over. Good. Roll over again. Okay, so again, the timing is really important. You want to click as he's rolling over, and then after a few days of this, you'll find all you have to do is motion towards him, and he'll roll over. I didn't click that time, but that's okay. Let's try it again, kitty. There you go. Gets easier and easier because he knows what you want. There you go. This is a really fun game. You can even play it at parties. And you're going to practice your shaping skills without using the cat at first. You're going to start with a human. So get a human uh, guinea pig and you're going to put him in a room and say, okay, now you're an animal and this is a new uh, room you're in and you're very curious. And also, whenever you hear a click, it means I'm going to give you some food. So you're going to walk around, and if you do something I like, I'm going to click, and you stop whatever you're doing, come back, and get a Smarty or something from me. Okay? So then all you have to do is think of a behavior you're going to train him to do. Remember, no English words in this. You can't tell him what to do. Uh, so think of something. You can start easy, like turning, going and turning on a light switch, or um, picking up a banana and... Then you can get a little more advanced, uh, picking up a banana, peeling it, kneading it, or setting the time on the VCR, <laughs> something like that. But start simple and then move on. This is a great way to practice your shaping skills. So let's see what it looks like. Excellent. Once you're pretty consistent that you can get the behavior. So I know every time I lift the target stick, the cat will go up. Then you can start putting it on cue. So uh, that's going to be phasing out the target stick and phasing in an action or a cue. And cues can be either words or actions. So um, I'm pretty consistent. I can get this set up pretty consistent. He'll do it almost every time. So now I'm going to put it on cue. So before he does the behavior, before I ask him to do the behavior, I'm going to say something 
and I'm going to start phasing out the target. So I'll start doing this. Can you sit up? Here you go. You saw the end product there, but can you sit up? Sit up? You see how I'm phasing out the target? I'm still using it, sort of just to motion to get them to go up, but I'm slowly phasing it out, and I'll slowly, uh, I'll soon I'll get it completely out. Can you sit up? Good. Now this might take you a few sessions. Um, don't be fooled into thinking it's going to happen in one session. But can you? Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. There you go. So after a few sessions that he knows every time you say sit up, He's about to, you're going to ask him to sit up and he's going to get rewarded for it. Sit up. He's going to start to, uh, to do it without the target stick at all. And then when you hear sit up, he's going to start to sit up without even uh, seeing the target stick at all. You can put either word cues or hand signals to cue the behavior. Uh, for sit up, you can use the word sit up. For wave, I just wiggle my finger and what I did was I wiggled my finger before I asked him for the wave. And soon he just saw the wiggling finger and he'd wave right away. Kitty? Come here. Now another thing, you can see my cat uh, doing things while I'm sitting here babbling on to you. Um, he's offering up behaviors. This is a great way to see that this training really is um, a communication between you and your cat. And your cat loves the training. He's sitting here offering things up. Hey, do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want me to scratch my face? Do you want me to do this? And this is great because you can now select and shape all those different behaviors into what you need. So uh, never discourage that. But once you have a behavior on cue, you don't want to uh, you don't want to reward for it if he offers it um, when you didn't cue. You only want to reward the behavior if he offers it to you after you've given him the cue. If you don't want to train your cat to do tricks, that's fine. But you should at least train him one thing, and you probably already have the behavior, and that is to come to his name, Kitty. Kitty, come here, kitty. Good kitty, yes. Now, how did I do that? Everyone's very impressed about that, but it's very easy. You probably already have the behavior, like I said. So, if I shook this, what happens? Kitty comes running, okay, and you give him a treat. So, uh, you either use the pounce, uh, the shaking treats, or you know you have some treats that when you shake them, your cat will come running, the can opener. Well, what you're going to do is, so you've got the behavior, now you're going to put it on cue. So what you'll do is you'll say, kitty, well, whichever, you know, you know, your cat's name, kitty, and then shake. He comes and give him a treat. Random throughout the day, five, six, ten times a day, uh, you know, whenever you see it, just go, hmm, kitty, and then shake, and he'll come running. And soon, of course, as you know, soon all you'll have to do is say, kitty, and the cat will come running, because he knows what's coming after is the shake. Now, one other uh, sort of concept that's kind of hard to grasp, but, oh, sweetie. Uh, is when you're training. So what we've been doing so far is we've been clicking and treating, clicking and treating, and when he comes I give him a treat. But you don't have to give him a treat every single time. In fact, they work harder for you if you don't give a treat every time. Um, and especially, you know, you want to be able to call your cat sometimes and not have to give him a treat for coming. So you're going to work on random reinforcement. So maybe you'll give him a treat, give him a treat, the next time nothing, the next time a treat, maybe twice with nothing, and then a treat. So he never knows when the treat is coming. This is a really hard concept to grasp, but we actually work harder when the, when the reward is random. Think of casinos with the, um, the slot machines. You never know when a reward's coming. And small, small, big, nothing, 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 small, small. It's exactly